Welcome back. Hello. To a hack. Hello. It's the hottie Bugatti of hacks. Is it? People are using it, man. I <laughs> no I hear one's... I hear some rumblings about no the hottie one's using Bugatti. This. I have heard um what was it? My little. I'm part of the Big Brother Big Sister program. Congratulations. And, oh, thank you. And I had to uh, teach her the word bodacious recently because <laughs> <laughs> everyone, it's a cool word. Yep. So yep. that everyone, it, it's got to trend back, right? IPs are coming back. You don't think That's like true. words That's are true. coming back? Slang is coming back. Yeah. 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 90s slang. It'll yeah, be yeah. there. But you got you to gotta remix it a little bit. That's Bodie. That's Bodie. <laughs> or Dacious. Dacious. Oh, we're not going to get That's through this, this next episode at all. <laughs> uh, we're prolonging this hack. All right. Here is the hack. Well, do we want to explain what a hack is? We probably should. Sure. If you're listening for the first time, welcome. Welcome back. I know we, we tend here. to banter yeah. a little bit. Yes, we do. Uh, but you are hopefully here to learn a little bit about animation mm -hmm. and the process behind it. Mm -hmm. So we are doing a hack episode, which typically are shorter formed videos that just give you a little bit of a deeper insight into a specific topic, uh, whether that's on the business side or the yeah. creative side. And so today we are on the creative side Yes. Uh, because there is a mysterious stage that happens in animation. I wouldn't call it mysterious. I it think I, people have heard the word. I think it, they're confused about the word. Mm -hmm. They're not sure what it means. Or maybe they're like, they conflate it with a different word or a different thing. And, you know, it's, it's confusing. It's right. confusing. That's why today's yeah. hack is, what the heck is an animatic? Wow, what voice is that? I don't know. I was. <laughs> We're having a day. Yes. So, uh, but yes, we're going to talk about animatics. Animatic. Not animation. Not storyboards animatics animatic yes yes so an animatic yes simply put is a video file that combines storyboards with sound storyboards with sound you can also think about it as a uh, static and animation animation static animatic you see what i did there Nice. I don't know if that's actually where it comes that's from. That's maybe where it comes from. I, that's what we I didn't thought. do any research for where I, that yeah, term came we from. Probably should, but that might be it. You know, nice. I'm, that's an interesting quick point that a lot of times in the industry, like you get taught words and you're like, "This is what it is that's now," just what it and is. here yeah, we are. That's so. true. So it's an animatic is used in a lot of industries. You'll see it in in uh, pre production for films for feature mm -hmm. films. You'll see it in commercial advertising work. Um, for their pre-production, it's it's always in the stages prior to what they call production, right? Mm -hmm. Starting work, um, depending on the type of production that you're using, so or or working with. Yeah, you'll see it a lot in animated feature films. Animated feature films big, do big spot. big animatics. They they'll do a whole scene in an animatic, see if it's working, mash up all the animatics together, see if they're working, and right. then so move what forward. is an animatic? Yeah. yeah, so an animatic sits between the storyboards and the animation stages in our production flow. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a, it's really used to give the viewer or the reviewer or the client a sense of timing and pacing of the video. You wanna make sure that you understand, well, how, how is this flowing? Mm -hmm. That's really the question. Well, and, yeah, there's a yeah. couple of different questions that you need to ask yourself, yeah. right? So you're, you're getting a video, right? But it's of these storyboard images <laughs> and yep. it's being timed out over time so you're seeing kind of what it looks like but you're not really thinking about the design or what the characters look like or how it you know how that feels it's more like asking yourself do parts feel too fast do they feel too slow is the story overall from shot to shot from image to image is it cohesive is it saying the message that you're trying to get out um, or do you need to add things or switch it up for yeah. clarity's sake? So if, if you do have a character in your piece, usually it is in the storyboards as well. Mm -hmm. Like they design characters within the storyboards very roughly. Mm -hmm. Almost always animatics with characters in them are going to be very, very rough. We don't yeah, do that in our, yeah. in our workflow. We do it a little bit differently where we're designing final frames and then we're putting that to an animatic file. And this is where scratch tracks come in. We, we did a hack on scratch tracks. That's the true. first hack. Scratch tracks are used within an animatic mostly, again, yeah. for timing and pacing and making sure that those are, are, are working well. Yeah. So, so an important thing to note when you're in animation production and you're doing and you're watching an animatic, uh, it's important to note that this should be the very, very last place that you make any changes mm. to the script, right? Anytime you're like, oh, it, it's not flowing here because the way we're narrating this is incorrect or we have to change out yeah. the, you know, things for pacing. And 
it's really because once you get into animation, and we probably can't stress this enough, but once you're in animation and you're actually making those storyboard images move, that's where if you change the script, you're going to impact a lot of yeah. the production. You're going to double the work. To give yeah. you a little bit more background there is that you're 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 getting into creating assets, generating rigs. At this point, we've talked about a mm-hmm. bunch of these concepts inside of our podcast. So so hopefully you understand this. But you, you've generated a lot of the things that are going to be kind of, uh, that take a lot of time to create, right. the build in there. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to change those. Sometimes it's not. Depends on style. Is it 2D? Mm-hmm. Is it 3D? Are you motion graphics or not? But, um, yeah, that's where that's where you want to do your fine tweaking of the script. Right. Um, and especially if you have humor in your script or something like that, you want to make sure that you're you're timing that out properly. you got to have those great jokes with proper gotta timing. got to put those jokes in. Yeah. I, I recommend them highly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what yeah. jokes you've liked in our podcast. So, but but yeah, I think the main important point here is that you're really just looking at the pacing, the timing, the flow of the video yeah. overall before you even get into motion. Yeah. Right. So you're getting some idea as close as you possibly can before you actually see the characters move and, yeah. and interact, how it's going to feel overall. Yeah. So um, so if, if you're moving into production or you're thinking about doing an animated project, um, there are a bunch of reasons why you should use an animatic or at least ask for one from the production studio that you're working with. Yeah. What are some of those reasons? Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest ones is that you have time in the schedule for it. Mm. There are a number of times we've worked with clients in the past that say, you know, we're going to jump right from storyboard approval to animation, um, and that's totally fine. Right. Uh, but if you have time in the schedule for it, it just adds an extra layer of clarity yeah. for making any changes. Um, if you've never made an animated video before, mm. it is an excellent way of seeing things in motion before actually making it move. Yeah, that's a big one for for yeah. first timers for sure. Yes, yeah, yeah definitely recommended. Um, if you're not locked in on the script just yet, yeah. right? You you've gotten to a certain place where you're like it, it feels pretty tight. Maybe it's like eighty percent of the way there. But if it's not a hundred percent, do the animatic. See if it feels right. If yeah. you're like, oh, now I realize that this like one storyboard frame that we had an idea of what the concept would be like the sentence is like super long way too long yeah, super yeah. Long so now we have thought. to chop yep. chop up the script a little bit yep. to make it more clarifying that's a good one um that's definitely helpful if you're working with story driven or character driven videos yep. really helpful to have an animatic because oftentimes if you're doing something story driven you might find that the script will get you some of the way there but being able to see a change in pace, especially if you're doing something more action oriented, or yeah. you're seeing a transition, or happen. drama, like or any drama, any, any yeah. genre that you put in there for the story is going to feel a certain way, yeah. and you want to make sure that you get that before you get into asset creation, before you get into you know a hardcore production for sure, type for thing. sure, yeah. And maybe the last one is like when you're reviewing something with a large team, yes, right? Because if you need people to approve on what's a what's a what's a large team. How many people you I would say? I want to say at least 10. <laughs> what do you mean? I, yeah. I would say if, if four or more. Four or more. Three people, you can handle something with a storyboard, maybe a, a PDF document, something like that that you're mm-hmm. reviewing. But four, that's a sweet spot right there with just like there's a little bit too many cooks in the kitchen and you want to make sure you get something a little bit a little bit more. I'm, I'm giggling a little digestible. bit because it also reminds me of um, when people define what becomes a – crazy cat lady versus just a cat lady how many like, cats you yeah it's you usually are. once you hit past three <laughs> <laughs> for like once four you get cats, to four yeah, a little yeah, more yeah, yeah. You then you start it. to question yeah, a little yeah. bit but you know much love to everybody who has cats because we love the cats best. we yeah. love cats um, and dogs we love dogs i do i do we love cats and dogs <laughs> all animals all so, animals <laughs> uh, regardless, the one thing to note for us is we tend to find that the longer that we've worked with a client, um, they tend to put in animatics less and less. And True. it's because they yeah. they tend to start sort of trusting the process a little bit more to understand yeah. how the storyboard transitions into animation. Yeah. Like that once once that clicks, it's not as necessary to do the animatic, but then you take it on a case by case yeah, basis. Still helpful, still helpful in, in again storyboard character driven pieces, we still try to do something like that. But yeah. 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 We'll have maybe examples in a, a description down below of the like what an animatic looks like, because I think that's always helpful to see. Maybe. Yeah we will. I don't know. <laughs> We're nice people. We do that. 
Mm, but then I have to go get another link and then that thing. <laughs> the so many buttons oh, to click. Oh, click no. on Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> and that's it. This has it. been another hack. That's our hack. We appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, as always, stay open. Stay. <laughs> I, think, right. I think it was that's stay honest. Right. Stay. Stay honest. Stay, stay honest. Do it again. Okay. And as always, stay honest. Stay creative. Stay open. Open pixel. Bye. <laughs>